right. So we're here today at Lindome Lakes and we're on the Loco Pond, which is probably my favorite pond here at Lindome. And for a good reason, it's home to some massive F1s and carp. Now today we're gonna to run through probably the most deadly tactic for catching big weights on this lake, and that's jigger fishing. Now there's another lovely big F1, and I'm gonna run you through how I'm gonna use the jigger to get the best out of it, and how I set it up, and the baits that I use, and how I get the best out of this deadly method at this time of year. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk through quickly, just as I'm feeding a bit of bait into the peg, is what bait I've actually chosen to use today. Like, we're here at Lindone today, like I said, and the rule here now is you're not allowed to use casters in the open matching festivals. Now, Loco's a really big lake, catches the wind quite a bit, so that sort of rules out maggots to me. We're gonna to struggle to feed them out at distance. So the number one choice for me is gonna be pellets. We've got some of the four mil fishery pellets. They're a nice pellet here at Lindome. They're a Coppins pellet and they fire out well and they group really well. Perfect for what I'm trying to do today. Like I say, Loco's a big lake. So fishing short, fishing six meters, eight meters, 10 meters, isn't quite eff effective enough on this lake. You need to get out a bit. So today I'm fishing 14 and a half meters and I can get the pellets out there nicely. So that's why I've chose to use four mil pellets. And again, chose four mils as opposed to six mils purely because I'm mainly targeting F1s, but also it's to do with being able to feed them aggressively. With six mils, you tend to have to just ping one or two pellets out, three pellets, not many. Whereas if I'm gonna fish with four mils, I can put a decent 15, 20 pellets in at a time, make a lot of noise and create a lot of fish feeding in the peg. So I'm just gonna ship out now and I'm gonna start fishing. So I've started today, just from knowledge of this lake, it's quite a deep lake. Normally about three foot is a good depth to start at of this lake. If I get a few as I'm lowering my jigger down, I feel like the fish is shallow, I can always come a little bit higher up, but I'm just gonna start at three foot and it's normally a good depth to go in and catch a few fish. So slap my jigger over once, just so everything's laid in nice and tight. It also creates a little bit of noise that might catch you a fish. Now I'm gonna lower it in, cause I don't know what depth the fish are at at the minute. I'm just gonna lower it in slowly and see if I get any bites as my rig's going down. Now later on in the session, I'm not gonna do this. So I'm gonna actually change the way I'm working my jigger and I'll explain that as I go through. But what I'm gonna do, once I lower it down to my stop, I'm just gonna, oh, I think I had a little, there you go. I was gonna say then, I thought I had a little bit of a sign. The actual see me float went under, which sometimes is the case. And then as I lifted up, there was one on. Now the F1s in this lake are quite a big size, so you need some decent kit on. I've got a white hydro in this, and I've got an 015 hook length, so quite positive a uh, tackle for fishing the shallow for F1s really. But like I say, they're a good stamp of fish, so take your time. Don't need to rush these fish at all, like they probably average nearly four pound in this lake, so you have a nice steady day on this you'll have a massive weight now this is a slightly smaller one but i bet you it's still two and a half pounds something like that Ooh, just pinged off at the net but i got him nice f1 like i say two 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 and a half pound cracking fish and like i said that's probably a small one for this lake so you can see how on this lake you can catch big weights on this particular method now quickly just mention that I started on my three foot rig today and like I say I'm trying to work out what depth they're at now on this rig obviously I've got I'm going to show you this in more detail later but I've got a line stop here on my rig so at the minute that's set at three foot obviously then I've got eight inches between my float stop and my pole tip just purely because the fishery rules stipulate you've got to have an eight inch line but what I can do with this is I can move this about so I caught that fish right down at my stop, which is perfect. That's what I'm always trying to achieve. I don't really want to be catching as I'm lowering my pole tip down and one pulls my elastic out because then I find that you're not finding the perfect depth where the fish are at. I'm always trying to find that exact depth where the fish are feeding well. So what I'll be doing is I'll be moving that stop around or picking up a different rig, depending on what depth I feel the fish are at. So at the minute that seems about right. But if I start catching them as I'm lowering them down, and it pulls it out, I will be sliding my stop down until I find that depth where I'm catching them right on my stop, which is how I want to catch them, because then I feel like you can be more efficient. I don't really want to be wasting time lowering my rig down. If I can get straight down to my stop where the fish are at and then just jig it up and lower it back down, that's how I can be fast as possible 
and catch a bigger weight as possible, which is what I'm always trying to look to achieve. So I'm just going to fire a few pellets out before I ship out. Two pouches of 24 mils. Like I say, I'm being positive. It's a big lake. It's a deep lake. It's absolutely solid with fish. You don't want to just fire, like I say, just a couple of pellets in. I want to be quite aggressive. So again, I'm going to lower it down slow just for the meanwhile. Again, I'm trying to find out what's my best depth. I think I had a little bit of a sign then. That was probably about a foot, 10 inches from my stop. So there might be a few fish starting to come a little bit higher in the water now. Right, so I'm down on my stop. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to jig it up and lower it back down. Now, when I say jig it up, a lot of anglers might just lift slow and lower it back down like this. Now, what I'm trying to achieve is I want my hook, hook length and my hook bait to flutter about. So by giving it an actual strike to flick it up, that just gets that hook length fluttering about, the hook bait fluttering about, and it just encourages the fish to snatch at them. So being quite aggressive with my flick like that, and almost doing, like I say, like a little strike. Normally seems to work better. Now, keep the feed going in. So again, two lots of pellets. Lower it back down, flick it up. Lower it back down. Keeping it on the move. That's the perfect thing about this method. It encourages, encourages you as an angler to keep the bait on the move. And I think when you're fishing for F1, shallow, that's so, so important because I think any bait that's sat static when you're fishing for F1s, the fish are quite happy just to leave. They know it's dangerous. They know anything that's just sat still at a depth isn't safe. You know, it, that's not what happens. Your four mil pellets don't just get down to, say, three foot and then stop. They keep falling. So any bait that's sat still is unnatural to the fish. So I think that's what, another reason why this method is so good because you're constantly keeping your hook bait on the move. Now, I don't feel like we're at the right depth as of yet. It's not quick. I know there's an odd fish there. This is where just tinkering with it. See, I think I had another little sign then, a little bit shallower. So that might see me soon, pick up my shallower rig or just slide my float stop down. So just keep on the move, keep busy. Like I say, you don't have to catch really, really fast. I feel like when you're doing this sort of fishing, the time goes by and you don't feel like you've been waiting a long time for a bite. And sometimes, you know, you've only been sat out there sort of 90 seconds and then you catch a fish and you feel like it's slow. But at this stamp of fish, what we're catching today, as long as we can be nice and steady, find what depth the fish are roughly at. See, there you go, I've got one. Again, that felt like that was very close to me stop again so I, I think we're in and around the right depth but i actually think the fish might be a tiny bit shallower maybe two and a half foot would be better so i might actually try that next chuck just moving me stop down to two and a half foot again feels like a decent fish well i say that it's probably again probably one of the smaller ones out of this lake since I said the fish were decent size, we caught two little ones. It's always the way on camera. But still, a lovely F1 all the same. Now, like I say, I'm not convinced that that depth's quite perfect. I feel like the fish are a little bit shallower. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook it up. I'm going to look at my markers on my top kits. Now I'm at 36 inches. So I'm just going to shallow it up to 30 inches, two and a half foot. I'm just going to see if that's better. Now, that's the beauty of having them marks on your kits. Like, I always talk about it with all of me fishing, but in particular when I'm fishing shallow, I'm looking for that perfect depth, that optimum depth all the time. So, put my top kit on. Two lots of pellets. Need to get them fish competing. Need to keep drawing fish in. Like I say big expanse of water loco it's not like these smaller snake lake venues that you might be fishing for f1s these fish might not necessarily start in your peg you might have to draw the fish in from out in the lake so being quite aggressive with your feed is very very important so lower it down to me stop and i think again i think i had a little sign then just as it was about to touch me stop so i might be getting a little bit closer to what the perfect depth is now 
If not, obviously, we know we were marked up at three foot. So if I don't get one this chuck and I don't get any bites, I can always just nip back in and quickly deepen back off. But I'm always trying to improve my catch rate. I don't like just settling for catching as I am. I, I like to try and keep making little tweaks to make it better. So keep everything busy, keep feeding, keep twitching my rig. I think that's really, really important just to be busy. I tend to find that the anglers who do best with shallow fishing in general, but in particular this method, the jigger, are ones who constantly move in the rig, keeping everything, you know, consistent, keep feeding, keep flicking. You know, if you're not catching, don't just sit there, not moving your rig or changing the depth, keep everything going. And normally you're rewarded with more fish that way. I've not had a bite yet on this bit shallower. So I might be quickly back in and changing it back down to three foot again. Now I don't want to waste time at the wrong depth either. That's the thing. I'd always rather be fishing a little bit deeper where I know I've got a chance of catching a fish than be fishing too shallow and be completely missing out on the fish. So I'm not going to rush yet. Because obviously, again, there you go. I was about to say, obviously, we don't need to catch really, really fast. I don't want to rush, but I also don't want to waste time. So eventually, again, I did come back with a fish there. So maybe the fish are actually somewhere in between. And this is what I'm thinking all the time. I felt like three foot was a little bit shallow. A uh, little bit deep, sorry. I feel like maybe two and a half foot's a little bit shallow. Now, maybe somewhere in between is going to be perfect so i might even just inch it up a little bit more this time like i say in search of that perfect depth another nice f1 and i always check where the fish are hooked as well now that is pretty much in the top lip slightly towards the side so i know i'm in and around the right depth i definitely don't feel like i'm too deep i do feel like the probably if anything the main bulk of the fish is sat a little bit deeper so again i'm going to just check my depth so i'm at 30 inches i started at 36 i'm just going to slide my stop to 33 inches now it sounds very precise this but it's just about finding that ultimate key area where the fish are at now what i'm looking for is like i say trying to be as efficient as possible now if you're too shallow like i say we'll miss out on the fish altogether. If I'm too deep, I'll catch an odd one, but not as many as I could do. So 33 inches now, I feel like we're gonna be in and around that perfect depth now. So I'm gonna feed twice. Again, I like to feed a couple of times while I'm back, especially when I'm fishing deeper like I am today, because it just lets them pellets get down to that level where my rig's gonna catch up to them. It just gives you a chance to catch them on really really quick when you first ship in i'm just going to lower it down get down to my stop flick it up lower the last little bit down lift it back up keep my feed going in just keep working my rig now obviously today we're fishing with pellets and I've, I've explained the reasons behind that, the choice today but what a lot of people have asked me would is would I fish it the same with other baits and it works exactly the same regardless what I'm fishing if I'm fishing you know casters maggots pellets I'd fish it there you go now I feel like even though it wasn't instant that was a little bit faster and it was a nice clean bite right down at my stop. I feel like I'm definitely a lot closer to being at that perfect depth now. But as I was touching on, I was just quickly talking about bait choice. With all my baits that I choose to use, not just pellets, I'd fish it exactly the same as this. It's just obviously dependent on venue, fishery rules, stuff like that. Now 
Now look at this, the stamp of these F1s, they're just cracking. Brilliant fishing, I love this lake. Probably got to be one of my favourite lakes in the country to fish. When you're catching massive F1s like that on the jigger, it doesn't get much better than that. So what I quick think I'm quickly going to do, I'm just going to touch on the rig in more detail and then we'll carry on with the fishing and see if anything develops later into the session. Right, so I'm just going to talk you through my rigs that I've got set up today. Like I say, we've just set jigger rigs up today. One, because we wanted to cover that method for this video, but also because on lakes such as this, which are these big deep lakes, the catching the wind, stuff like that, they just work so much better than your standard fixed rigs, your light little floats. So that's the reason why I choose to use this, these sort of rigs on this sort of venue where you've got these lakes. Like I say, they're big, deep, such as Loco, Fennies. It's really important that you set these jiggers up. Now, the first rig, this is my shallowest rig. I've got three different rigs today. And the reason behind the three different rigs is because I don't want too much line out the water when I'm fishing with these jiggers. Like I say, they're gonna catch the wind. So if I was to say have a rig that was four foot long and use that for fishing at two foot as well, it will work, but not as effectively because I'll have all that line out the water getting caught by the wind. So I do like to have a few different rigs. So today I've got one at two foot, one at three foot and one at four foot. And that covers up to about the deepest that you tend to catch on a venue like this. So basically I've got a four inch 013 up length 16 hook with a banded pellet again i'd use the same setup if i was going to be fishing with casters or maggots i've got a little bulk of number eight stots 0.4 jigger which i find is the perfect all-round size that just slides on the line works perfectly well these are the richie wilson jiggers i just find that they work well nice to keep it nice and simple i've got like i say two foot between the hook and the stop and that's just a little line stop. And all that does, one, it's for fishery rules so that my jigger can't get closer than eight inches from my pole. But that also sets the depth. So like I say, it's at two foot now, but if I want to shallow it up to 18 inch, just means I can slide that down, you know, slide it back up, slide it to 21 inch, 24 inch, just allows me to get the depth set perfectly. It's really important. Like I say, 017 main line and going up to the elastic, which is white hydro elastic, which is nice positive elastic, maybe slightly heavier than I might use at other venues, which are smaller venues where I might use orange hydro. I use white on a venue like this, one because the fish is slightly bigger, but also because of the length of the rig, slightly deeper, just helps me to control the fish. And also I've got them through a short top kit, which I think is really important. And then exactly the same on my three foot rig. I've just got it, but it's a little bit deeper. Same float, hooks, elastic, everything's the same. And then on my four foot rig, again, everything's the same, but I have actually scaled up to just onto a gray hydro on this. And basically, again, it's just because I've got a longer rig, it's just to control, as I'm playing the fish, it's just to control the fish a bit easier. I just find that when you go a little bit deeper, that heavier elastic just works better. If you want to see in more detail how I tie these rigs. We have actually done a separate video on how I tie my jigger rig, and it's exactly the same rigs what I'm using today. Uh, so obviously if you're interested in how I set it up, the different components and exactly what I'm using, check that video out as well. The only other thing I wanna talk about, about my jigger fishing is um, the length of the hook length. I think that's something that's really important. I think I touched on a four inch hook length really important not to use too short hook length when you're jigger fishing. I've touched on before that I'm going to be lifting up and jigging my float and I want that fluttering of my hook bait. If I use a really short hook length like a three or a two inch hook length I just find that there's not enough movement there so it's important to use uh, like a little bit of a longer hook length so four to six inch hook length normally works well so that's one thing that's really important because for a lot of my other shallow fishing and a lot of other fishing that i've covered i use really short three inch hook lengths or two inch hook lengths when i'm fishing shallow but when i'm fishing with a jigger that little bit more movement just works a lot better so that's an extra tip that might get you a few more bites when you're fishing a jigger right so we're back fishing and we're going to go back in at the same depth what I was catching on before I stopped to talk about the rigs. And that's 33 inches, which was working perfectly well. I felt like that was right in the zone of where the fish was. Now, what I want to touch on is, like I say, I'm cattying out to a decent distance today. I'm fishing like 14 and a half metres. And what a lot of people 
struggle with is maybe one achieve in the distance, but also keeping it grouped nicely. Now, I don't like to use a really soft catapult. I tend to find if you use a soft catapult, one, you have to pull it back quite a bit and it makes everything more difficult to get the bait out there. But also you tend to start spreading your bait. And also these little soft catapults don't have a pouch that's big enough to put a decent amount of bait in. I like quite a big pouch. It gives me the option on a lake like this of getting some bait in fast. And I think that's really important. So the catapult I use is a Drennan Waggler Range Pellet Pult. Like I say, it's designed for the waggler, but I also use it for all my pole fishing because it just means I can get my bait out nice and easily. It's got the black elastic and it's got the hard solid pouch and it's quite a big pouch, which allows me to easily get 20 pellets in with plenty more room to put more in if needs be. And it means I can fire them out, get them right out to the distance and keep everything grouped nicely. Just a perfect catapult for this style of fishing on these big open water lakes. So I'm just gonna ship out Slap, slap it over once. And now, I touched on this before, when I found what depth works well, I don't waste time in lowering it down to my stop. I get it down to where I think the fish are. Because obviously, if you don't think the fish are shallower than where you're fishing, there's no need to lower that all that rigging dead slow. You're just wasting time. So I get it down nice and quick to my stop. And I just flick it up, lower it down, flick it up, lower it down. Now. Because obviously I might have had a little break in feed into, oh, I was about to say the fish might have dropped a little bit deeper, but I don't think so. They're still there. That definitely seems like the best depth. That was, again, probably the fastest bite we've had today. And this is where tweaking your depth is so, so important. Like people getting an odd fish at three foot, they'll just be happy catching like that. But I'm always trying to find ways of catching faster. Now, you wouldn't believe like a three inch difference can make such a difference, but when you're trying to catch fast, now again, another cracking F1. But yeah, when you're trying to catch fast, it's important to get that depth absolutely critical where the fish are at. Gotta be getting on for three and a half, four pound, popping back. So four mil pellet on the band. One little thing, don't know how much of a difference this makes, but it's always something I always do. I'm always looking to pick out a real big pellet or a longer pellet. The only reason I feel like they just maybe stand out a little bit more, just get picked up a bit faster. Also, they tend to, you know, go on the band a bit better. They stay on a bit better. So that's something that I always look for. I always root about in amongst my pellets, find a nice big pellet, ship out, Fire my pellets in. See that wind's picking up a little bit more now, but I can still get my pellets out with this catapult for that 14 and a half meters, which again is really important on this lake. I found in the past I've tried to catch them shorter and it just doesn't work the same. So again, lower it down nice and fast, get it down near me stop, just stop that last couple of inches, lower the last little bit and a bit slower, flick it up, lower it down. Flick it up. I think I had a little bit of a sign then. Feed again. Oh, and again, I think I'm sure I felt a fish then. Might have just missed that one. So if that starts to happen again, don't think once you've found the depth that was working for a little spell that it's going to stay like that all day. They might come a little bit shallower. There you go. Brilliant fishing. You can see how effective that is when the fish are, you know, feeding at quite a decent depth, really, like just short of three foot, where it'd be really hard to catch on a fixed rig, especially in this wind. You just can't beat that jigger for this style of fishing. So, like I say, if you want to see more about the actual rigs in detail, check out the members channel. And there'll be a little section on there, exactly how I tie everything up and how to get the best out of, you know, the setup and stuff like that. Feels like another decent F1. They don't half scrap in here because they've got a decent depth under the feet. So that's why you need, like I say, a reasonable elastic. So yeah, if you want to check more out, check out the members channel. 
power tie these rigs up and you'll catch more fish like that on the jigger.